Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be going over the New Holland CX and CR yield monitoring setup. So we're at the run screen. We're going to navigate back to our home screen. And then we're going to navigate to the toolbox. So there's several things in the toolbox we'll mention that need to be set up properly in order for the yield mapping and yield monitoring system to work. Uh, the first thing right here is the interface level, so we need to make sure that that's set to advanced. Uh, there's two different modes there. If you set it to basic, uh, that basically takes the data recording portion of the display and uh, makes it uh, unuseful. So it takes your precision farming capabilities away. So we need to make sure that this is set to advanced, and we need to make sure that we have a current vehicle in this. Uh, for the CXCR, there's only one software package so it's not so much a big deal. Toolbox operator, we need to make sure that we have an operator, make sure that we have the correct units as well. Uh, the layouts, if we want to customize any layouts we can certainly do that. There is a video dedicated uh, exclusively for that. Toolbox video, and we can use that for setting up video cameras on the combine, so if we one, for instance, one on the grain tank, and one on the loading auger, and then one for the reverse side of the machine, we can certainly do that. And that gives us options for up to three inputs. Uh, moving on down, we'll go into drive here. Uh, looks like everything's correct there. Uh, toolbox head one, you could see a header as well instead of head one. Uh, pretty much the same setup though. <clears throat> so the first step here will be the header type. And in this case we have a grain head. Uh, you could see other heads already in here in a pick list as well. And then you have header width. This is the physical width of the header. So this is used for things like boundaries and obstacles. Your target working with, this is used for actually painting on the map, on the display. So that's the actual width that you're painting. Your width adjust step is the amount of feet that you adjust your target working with. So if you wanted to adjust it uh, to increase or decrease, uh, you can certainly do that. That's mainly for areas that have already been previously harvested and that affects your mapping. Header center offset, you would take the center line of the feeder house and the center line of the head and calculate the difference. If you have a right offset, that would be a positive value. If you have a left offset, that would be a negative value. Typically, this is going to be set to zero. Auto cut width, when we turn that on, both our overlap mode and our work with reset mode go blank. So all these are grayed out. <clears throat> so basically what's happening is the GPS is taking over when we get into previously harvested areas, it's going to automatically cut our target working width down. When we go over to head two, there's a couple things we need to note here. Uh, looks like everything's set up good. All right, so when we get into feeder, we'll have a maximum working height. And the maximum working height gives us the value at which, or the height at which, uh, the data recording stops. And we're measuring that from the feeder house. <clears throat> so what we would do in this case is we would go into here, we would raise or lower the feeder house. So if we raise the feeder house or lower the feeder house, you'll see that number change. And once that number change, you'll set it and then hit enter and you've determine the maximum working height of the, the height at which all of the data recording stops. This needs to be calibrated per crop type. Uh, moving on down, GPS, we need to make sure that we have GPS set up. We can have autonomous, it doesn't have to be differential GPS. PF tab, we need to make sure that the season setup date is correct. So at January 1st, 2018, that is the date where all of the data inside the display regarding mapping is archived. We can retrieve it from the desktop software, but it's still archived. 
toolbox yield. So you have uh, either a moisture sensor by itself or a yield flow sensor and a moisture sensor. In this case, we do. We just need to make sure that that's set up. And then the yield flow delay, <clears throat> this is basically a measurement of the time it takes from the head, from the green when it gets cut by the head to get to the flow sensor. So how much time does it take to have all of the grain travel through the machine essentially. Typically that's 12 to 15 seconds or so. Uh, nav, <clears throat> nav tab, this is just telling us that we have IntelliSteer installed on the vehicle, so we're using auto guidance. Okay, that's it for the toolbox. Uh, the next thing we need to look at is the performance tab, and we need to make sure that we have a grower farm field task and then lastly the crop type which will be associated with that task because we need to store all of the yield information and moisture information in that task next thing we'll look at is the calibrations uh, we'll go over distance moisture and yield calibrations in another video but for the crop calibrations We'll uh, kind of mention some things here. So, one, you need a crop type. So, in this case, it would be corn. And then you have a manual moisture content. This is the moisture that you would use if your moisture sensor, for some unknown reason, failed. Crop trade moisture and crop trade weight. Those are the values that the industry uses to calculate yield. <clears throat> so, obviously, a more dense crop or more uh, moist crop is going to be more yield. This is, like I said, an industry standard, so if your elevator is using something different, <clears throat> you can certainly change that. Uh, the C values, so C values are shown as pounds per second multiplied by 100. Your M percentage is the moisture sensor offset. This is calculated during the moisture calibration. Typically, this is going to be negative 5% to a positive 8% value. Your M1 value is the moisture sensor constant, which is a fixed value based on the crop type. And the S1 value is a moisture sensor sensitivity, which is also a fixed value and based on the crop type. So we just need to make sure that we have this set up. And once we do, we can certainly go to the distance, moisture, and yield calibration, which will cover in another video. So this wraps up the basic yield monitoring setup for a New Holland CX or CR combine. Thank you.